Hello Internet, Seth Skorakowski, and today we'll be taking a look at the Traveler Scenario Rule of Man Commemorative. Written by Lauren Wiseman and Mark Miller, the adventure first appeared in 1981's Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society, Issue 9. In 2019, it was expanded and updated for Mongoose's second edition in the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society, Volume 2. It's short, the original was only two pages, and while this new one, including maps and art and everything, comes to ten pages, which are ten very small pages, it is playable in a single session. But what makes this scenario interesting is that it's not exactly an adventure. It could be, but to me it's more of a side quest than an actual adventure. The travelers don't need their own ship for this one, and if they do, it will go very differently than if they don't, because there is going to be a journey in it. The scenario involves a very simple job, which ends up throwing the travelers into a world of covert spies, espionage, and has a high potential for combat. While set in the Spinward Marches, it's easily transferable to a different region of space if the Game Master wishes to for their own campaign, which is what I did when I ran this adventure. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, my tips and my suggestions as a Game Master who has successfully run this scenario. And I'm Jack the NPC. I'm here to give it to you from a player's side of things, as well as tell you the story about how our Aslan character accidentally became the mascot for a shawarma joint. But before we go any further, I must warn you that there will be spoilers. So any players in the audience, if you ever want to experience this scenario, please stop here. But send your Game Master this way to see about running the adventure for you. Okay, GMs, or at least I assume it's the GMs and all the players left like they were supposed to. You know who you are. Okay, GMs, as I said, the adventure begins in the Spinward Marches, specifically at the planet Regina. Now, in that area of the marches, the Zodani are... Excuse me, it's pronounced Zodani, not Zodani or Zodani or whatever the hell it is you keep calling them. Huh. Well, Slaufeg pronounces it Zodani, and they're more metal than you are, so I'm going to go with the metal band's pronunciation on this one. Anyway, the Zodani territory is nearby, and the whole area is sort of engaged in a cold war, with agents on both sides playing their little spy games and covert operations. So that's the background going on behind this whole scenario within the whole region itself. The adventure begins with the travelers at Regina Starport. Why they're there doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe they've got a ship and they're looking to pick up some cargo, or maybe they don't have their own ship and they're looking to be able to get some passage to be able to go somewhere else and they need to get a ride from somebody. The travelers are approached by a Varger merchant named Hazel, and she says that she has a small package, a coin collection, that she wants to send to the nearby world of Yori. However, due to shipping and declarations and legal mumbo-jumbo like that, the buyer doesn't want this coin collection declared as it passes through customs. Hazel suspects that the reason is as the final buyer doesn't want anybody to know this coin collection is there. That way they can kind of unveil the entire collection as one big piece without any warning and kind of give a big splash in the coin collector community. The module even gives us some information about coin collecting in the Traveler universe that the player characters can find in their ship's library if for some reason they wanted to look this up. Her proposition is that the Traveler's care this coin collection through customs, declaring it as just personal property, and then they deliver that collection to her contact on Yori, a guy named Yosef who's operating out of Bernava Curiosities. And she can give them all the paperwork and everything, that way this is all nice and legal and there's actually nothing illegal about what they're doing. Okay, so you want us to carry a bunch of coins six light years to some shop somewhere? I guess it's not the weirdest job we had to do. How much are you paying for it? The payment isn't that much. Normally, shipping prices are determined by, you know, tonnage and how many tons the cargo is, but this coin collection weighs like half a kilo, so it doesn't really weigh that much at all, so therefore there really shouldn't be much cost in order to ship it. But she's willing to pay middle passage for all the travelers to go, as well as uh, 500 credits each for just walking around money, and then Yosef on the other side should be able to pay more, a percentage of whatever the final sale price is to the final client for this purchase. Now, now, that is if the travelers do not have their own ship. If they do have their own ship, she's still going to pay them the 500 credits each, plus a fuel voucher to get to this destination, plus whatever it is Yosef is going to pay them at the final end once this deal is finally completed. 
Personally, I think this adventure works a lot better if the travelers do not have their own ship. Like, maybe they're trying to get to this other planet somewhere because they've got a, a patron or a contact or some job there waiting for them, but they have to buy their own passage. And, you know, passage to get to this other planet is expensive, and along comes this offer of this woman saying, I'll buy you middle passage to get there as long as you carry this coin collection with you when you go. Oh, it's just like when you sell your luggage space to get cheap airfare, you know, just like they did in Euro trip and holy crap i just realized that euro trip would make for a fantastic traveler adventure just don't tell scotty sky doesn't know now if they do have a ship the price that she's willing to pay might not be enough to send the travelers off to this planet just to deliver this coin collection uh you know just depending on whatever cargo they can get to go with them while they do that job itself so i suggest that if your travelers do have their own starship at this point in your campaign have this offer come along to a planet that they're already planning on going to, as in they're going there, and then this merchant shows up and says, hey, will you carry this coin collection with you while you go? The original 1981 scenario had the trip take the player characters from Regina to Lanth, which is 10 parsecs away, making this a serious journey. The new version changes that to Yori, and then provided a map to show that it's only two parsecs away, meaning that the travelers could get there in just one or two weeks, depending on what the jump drive of their ship is. For my game, which is taking place in the island subsectors of the Great Rift, an area that also has a lot of espionage between rival systems, I moved this scenario to the planet Colchis, which is a binary system. So for that, the travelers were to take the coins from Colchis to the planet Spinetti, which would either be a one-week micro-jump or two weeks of regular M-drive travel to get there, which is longer but doesn't require all the fuel that a jump travel would take. Now obviously, because this is a tabletop adventure, there is going to be something up with these coins. On the surface, they're pretty normal. There's two dozen coins, all sealed in a clear polymer case. Now 22 of those coins are completely normal and not really valuable in and of themselves. But two of these coins are extremely valuable. They're commemorative coins from the rule of man, or the second imperium as most people call it, and each of those is worth tens of thousands of credits. If the travelers really inspect these coins, they might notice a couple of irregularities about them, but a thorough inspection requires that you remove them from this case, which is risky to do without damaging either the case or the coins. Now those coins are totally fake. They're part of a Zodami spy network where intel is being transported back and forth between systems inside these fake coins. However, Third Imperium agents have been able to figure this out, and they've implanted fake data inside these coins that they're trying to feed to the Zodani, hoping that the Zodani think it's real, and then they're going to waste all this time, you know, chasing their tails, you know, trying to follow whatever this bogus data is. But because the Zodani often use psionic agents, the Imperium can't just send their own operatives to do this job. They need some you know, ignorant mooks in order to do it. Uh, that way they can't have their minds read by the Zodani and accidentally spill the beams about this entire operation. And that is where the travelers come in. Brave souls willing to run covert operations for the Imperium. And I, for one, hold on. Did you just call us ignorant mooks? Of course, diligent travelers might suspect this job as being a little bit fishy, and they might open the case, find the data, and believe that they're carrying real Zodane intelligence so back to the Zodane, which is going to be selling out the Imperium, which could be kind of interesting if they try to stop this and not carry the data, which is essentially going to throw the Third Imperium's plan completely out of whack because they want this information to be delivered. However, when I ran this for my group, my players did not find the data stores. In fact, it went a little bit more like this. Wow, these coins must be really valuable. I guess I'll just store them in my cabin and not give them a second thought. Seriously, guys. Now, the Zodani agents on the other side, they might figure out that their spy ring has been infiltrated and compromised. Game Master should roll 2d6, add the number of weeks that the travelers take to deliver the goods to see how suspicious they are by the time the travelers arrive on Yori. Now, once the travelers do arrive on the planet, it's going to take a while to get a hold of this guy, Yosef, that they're supposed to deliver them to, uh, because Yosef says that he's not in town after they're able to finally get a hold of him, but he says he's going to be in town later on once he finishes up some business, and he offers to meet the travelers at a restaurant in order to do the transfer. Now, of course, what's really going on 
on is Yosef's been in town the whole time. He and his agents have been watching the travelers ever since they arrived, you know, making sure that everything they're doing is legit and everything is on the up and up with these people that are delivering their intelligence. Also, the travelers might notice that there are some strange people that are following them if they make some really good streetwise roles. However, this group of people that's following them is agents of the Imperium who are trying to monitor the situation, you know, make sure this information is going to the Zodane exactly the way they want it to, and they want to make sure that their mission is all going according to plan. Which means that the travelers have a chance of noticing not just one, but two groups of people following them around. And if your players are already the paranoid type, that is guaranteed to freak them out. And if they decide to confront one of both of those groups of people, yeah, that is going to make for an interesting scene. When the PCs meet Yosef at the restaurant, it should hopefully go pretty smoothly for them, you know, depending on how paranoid he is on that role that you did earlier. Or any actions that they might have made since they arrived on planet might be able to increase whatever his suspicion level is of them. And they'll kind of determine if he's going to, you know, come to this meeting armed, or if he's going to have some people come with him. Maybe those other people are armed. Uh, he might even just have snipers across the street monitoring the situation from afar in case it goes south, because he thinks it will. Now, this deal should hopefully go very smoothly and then be done. However, it's then going to be interrupted by a robbery. A group of local criminals, completely ignorant of this whole spy thing going on, they find out about this coin transfer. You know, after all, Yosef is a legitimate antiques dealer, so they were able to hear that the travelers were looking for him to do some sort of transfer, so maybe they don't know that it's coins specifically, but they know that Yosef has got some sort of big deal coming through, and they're going to steal that thing for themselves. Now, how many robbers you use is completely up to you and your group, as well as how armed they are. They might just have clubs, or only one or two of them might have uh, firearms on them. It is going to be a pretty strict law-level world if you're going to do it as written. Now what happens next is completely up to your players and completely up to their dice. Uh, maybe Yosef thinks that the robbers are with the travelers, and this is all some elaborate double-cross, and all of a sudden they start pulling guns on the travelers while the travelers are getting shot at by the robbers from the other side of them. Or maybe he just snatches the coins and tries to make his escape. Or maybe Yosef ends up teaming up with the travelers in order to fight these robbers off of them, and it ends with the whole scenario with all of them becoming, you know, best friends and friends on Facebook and sharing other LinkedIn profile information or whatever else. Or maybe the travelers somehow end up with this coin collection and nobody to sell it to. Meanwhile, agents from both the Jodani Consulate and the Third Imperium are scouring the galaxy, desperate to find this missing coin collection and all the data inside of it that's now just hanging on a player character's wall somewhere. Overall, this is a pretty nice adventure. I like that it brings in a larger picture of what's going on in the world with the universe's politics kind of serving as a backdrop as the player characters are sort of serving as pawns in this larger story going on throughout the galaxy. But I don't see this as a main quest adventure, more of a side quest, really. Like, they're already going to the planet for this other job, and they either get this little job as something to do on the side, or as a means to pay for their passage to get to this other planet for a completely separate job. It also works as kind of a nice little side job that one or two characters could do while the rest of the group is doing whatever main job it is. Like, you know, the whole group is going to the planet for whatever reason it is, and then a couple of them have this little side hustle going on where they're going to sneak through a couple coins and get a little bit of walking around money for that. Now, one of the reasons that I chose this adventure to run, and what I like about a lot of the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society adventures, is that it's more of a short framework for a mini-adventure or an interesting conflict, you know, that can be worked into a variety of campaigns versus being, you know, a long 30 to 40 page module book with a lot of moving parts that might require multiple sessions in order to complete it. So, uh, you're gonna tell them about the shawarma now? Okay, so when I ran this, we had one of those weird moments happen that's almost good enough to make a dedicated war story video about, but not quite good enough to do its own video about this. When my players got the call from Yosef to meet him in a restaurant, they were naturally suspicious because they know they're playing a tabletop role-playing game. Now, I hadn't thought about what sort of restaurant it was that Yosef wanted to meet them at, I hadn't given any thought at all, but then the player characters asked me for some strange reason, what type of restaurant is it? So then I kind of panicked and I blurted out the first thing that came to my mind, 
and that ended up being shawarma. Anyway, one of the PCs is this huge Aslan warrior who had just joined the crew in the time between when they got the job and when they arrived with the goods. He volunteered to show up to the restaurant early and sit at a different table than everybody. So this huge Aslan, pretty much the only Aslan on this all-human world, is sitting at a table eating really slowly, trying to bide his time. He sees Yosef show up with two other guys. He notices that these guys are all packing heat, and these two other guys sit at a separate table as if they all don't know each other. But he can't tell if any of them recognize him as being part of the crew or not. Now, Yosef is only suspicious of the travelers a little bit, so he brought in some backup in case things go sideways. Anyway, the character with the coins and one other PC arrive, they sit with Yosef, they do the deal, and everything goes perfectly. But then the robbery happens. This pack of five robbers comes in, and the leader fires a shotgun into the ceiling, all dramatically, May I have your attention? Now, Yosef and his boys, they jump straight into action. They're scrambling to get the coins, and they're scrambling to get to cover, and they're siding with the player characters that they just did this deal with. Okay, I'll take it from here. So as combat begins, this huge Aslan just stands up from his table and casually disarms the first robber by knocking his shotgun across the room. He then proceeds to whoop the crap out of three of those robbers all by himself. Meanwhile, Yosef and his two goons, they end up teaming up with the player characters, and between all five of them, they're able to take out the other two robbers. whoop de freaking do However, once it's all done, Yosef and his boys, you know, they're spies. They don't want to be answering any questions to the cops or getting any sort of unwanted attention. So they're like, you know what? We're going to book it and get the hell out of here. The two player characters that are with them are like, you know what? That's a good idea. We're going to go ahead and flee this scene too. But the Aslan PC, he's not really sure what to do, because he doesn't want everybody to know that he's with those jerks that just ran out the door. So, unsure what to do, he just sits back down at his table and finishes off eating his shawarma. But... As the cop sirens start getting closer and closer, and he starts thinking to himself, Oh my god, did I break the law? Did I do something wrong? Or am I going to get in trouble for what I've done? So, he just stands back up, nods the dude behind the counter that's now holding a shotgun on those five robbers, and he just casually strolls out the door. So the player characters, they go off and they do whatever adventure it was that they were going to have on the planet. It takes them two weeks to complete this job. But once it's done, they're a little worried about returning to the starport to get their ship to get out of here because they're worried that they might be in trouble and that the police might be looking for them after everything that went down in the restaurant. And they find out that, yes, people are looking for them, just not in the way that they thought they were. You see, they didn't actually break any laws during that entire incident. You know, the robbers were the ones that attacked them, the robbers the ones that had firearms, the player characters didn't display any firearms in this high law level world, and the player characters merely defended themselves from this robbery, even though they did flee the scene that the crime took place, they themselves didn't break any laws. However, the security footage and all the cell phone videos of this incident had already gone viral. I mean, the image of this huge Aslan warrior just nonchalantly getting up from his table, whooping the crap out of three armed bad guys before sitting back down to finish his meal, that was internet gold right there. Everybody wanted to meet this guy. In fact, the restaurant that that took place in, they'd already changed their name and their mascot just to reflect and take advantage of all this free marketing they were getting. So the Aslan PC, he didn't get any monetary reward for this, but he does eat, get to eat for free at this little restaurant that's on a crappy little world that he's probably never going to visit again. Some adventures, the player characters, you know, might save a city or save an entire planet and be big damned heroes and have statues erected in their honor. Other adventures, you might just become a restaurant mascot and get free shawarma. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how to's, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, travelers, you have a great day. You know, all this talk about food has given me a hankering for some of the best shawarma in the galaxy. Schwama cat. Feed the warrior.